Hello, this is Haku Devine, and I am here to read to you the first document of the canon, The End of Death. Excerpt from the Foundation Database of K-Class Contingencies. <sighs> Omega K class. Likelihood near impossible. Severity survivable but requires moderate restructuring of human civilization. Description An Omega A class, this end of death scenario, refers to a situation where an immortality is forced upon all life without any other biological change, for example, the halting of aging or for sterilization. O protocols regarding the scenario assume steps are taken to, to avoid any ma broken masquerade situation. This scenario also assumes that the foundation has maintained its current structure and subdivisions. Priorities 1. Population control. Due to insect population, birth, and death rates, this must be addressed within 24 hours of scenarios onset before the insect population overtakes. WK class scenario thresholds. After this structure, it will be imperative that long term solution is advised for other organisms. organisms. 2. Veil control. While the entire human population will become exposed to anomalies at this time, it is important that no other anomalies come to their attention. Normalcy will be redefined to account for the effects of the Omega A class scenario. A containment must be continued. A misinformation campaign and to disseminate a cover story that explains the newfound mortality in terms of fabricated research. 3. Research terminal state a re replacement. If true death is not achievable, an alternative must be engineered for ethical reasons. It has been deemed unacceptable to let mankind suffer indefinitely due to decaying biological components. That's the basis of uh, or going over the first part of first of all I'm Haku I would like you to like subscribe and comment and on this video and secondly we're only going over this particular story in the clutches of life by Captain Kirby as I unfortunately cannot go over all of it in a single video. And the clutches of life. A woman watched her father's chest rise and fall from the chair next to his hospital bed. The heartbeat monitored or beeped in time with the song she listened to through her headphones. She wished she could spend her last visit chatting, but that's difficult to do with the unconscious. Besides, she'd, set, she'd end up repeating the same introduction as the last, last three visits. The whole, hello? Hello, have we met? Yes, I'm, uh, I'm your daughter. That can't be right, I have two sons. Wait a beat. Well, yes, you did also have two sons, but you also had me. Where are they? Eric is currently working in the field, so he can't make it. And, uh, well, Tony's no longer with us. Let's sit here. Eric and Tony? I thought my boys were named Andrew and Joseph. No, but. Actually, never mind. Can you get the nurse for me? I think my bed needs readjusting. Sure, Dad. Get up to leave. Wait, what was your name again? Joyce. You named me Joyce. And then get the nurse. Joyce has gone through the motions every time she visited, except this last time. Each of those 23 times, Joyce felt a sting in her chest and wished her father would just go back to sleep. Now Joyce got her wish, and she'd realized that 24 
There's a nicer number to 23. Too bad you missed the chance. Ten trained soldiers approached a dusty warehouse near the docks. The crashing of waves against the rocky shoreline washed out any noise made up made by MTF IOTA 10. The team lined up, up to the back entrance. Captain Eric Michaels held up two fingers and a thumb in extraction. Three, some retracted, leaving the fingers. Two, one. Michaels kicked in the door or in Marco as through a flashbang. The team flicked their ears and turned away from the door or just long for long enough for the the grenades go off. Bang! Then charged in behind it. Guns out. Bullets sprayed. Some guards it's hit the ground. Others fell behind Marshall, Okara, and Dark Van in the crates. The rest took lead to the chest. As Joyce's song finished, she stood up for it from her seat. She looked at the nurse, politely leaning against the door frame. Joyce couldn't remember how long the nurse had been staying there. It could have been minutes. It could have been hours. It's about time. Yeah, I know. Joyce replied. She glanced down at her dad again. He had one of his clothes close, like a child with a favorite stuff, uh, uh, with a favorite teddy bear. Right, I'm on my way. She said to herself. We'll tell you when it's over. The nurse called after Joyce, who half ran out of the room. Joyce refused to cry, but that didn't stop her from shaking. She took a seat in the waiting area and just rocked back and forth, trying to calm herself. She'd done worse in her day job. She'd lost lives before. Hell, she'd lost her own family before. While well, it does feel less, less real when they're ripped apart by elders abominations or succumbed to mimetic hazards. Why does this one have to feel so... Real. Concrete. Tavable. Genuine. Michaels popped up out from behind the forklift and shot a few rounds at the man across from him. MC and D he must have doubled the details since the last raid. He was already out of ammunition. His team was running in low all together. A quick scan and counted about 12 bogeys left. Michael turned to the private next to him. Turner, give me cover. Where are you headed, Sarge? You see that crate over there? Yeah. How much you bet as a ship it's part of a weapon in reorder? Turner opened his mouth to speak, but Mike Eichel was held his finger to Turner's lips. Trick question. Never. Are you telling me the odds? Just get going, Solo. Michael smiled and darted toward the prize as Turner let loose another round of bullets. A sharp pain shot up Michael's leg. We in shot through the e calf. The adrenaline carried him to the crate. Michael was cut the straps with his tactical knife and then shot the lock off. A side crate opened on its own. Michael's grin and grew a little wider. So normal. Dress looked up to see you in the clo. Sorry, thought it was worth coming inside to check in on you. Also, the car was getting stuffy. Nicola took a seat next to Joyce. He had volunteered to drive her back when Adita was dead, since she probably wouldn't be in a good headspace to be safe on the road. It also helps he has a name, not a number. Not helping. Sorry, I thought I'd just take your mind off of it. Can you just be quiet, please? Right, sorry. Joyce returned to rocking as Nicola watched her. She put her headphones on again, but didn't play any music. She just wanted to a strap against her ears to give her that feeling of isolation. The illusion of being alone in a crowded room. Are you sure we... You need to be here for this? We can just... I said shut up! It's not your dad you're pulling the plug on, so just shut up! The waiting room went silent. Joyce looked around. The color drained from her face. Just as her gauge reached the entrance, the nurse arrived, also looking pale. Um, Mrs. Michaels? Yes? I believe the doctor would like to, um, show you something.
Michael's grabbed one of four or devices. Uh, after entangling the devices, tubes, wires, and plastic casings, he managed to get a grip on the thing. Michael's was about to break every grip while they pound into his head during training. He stood up from behind the, in the crates and pulled the trigger. There was no recoil, no noise, nothing except a large hole that opened up into the security guard Michael was aimed at. Now to rinse and repeat. Michael was aimed to take another shot. A bullet caught one of the tubes. Michael's collapsed. Started screaming, trying to hold the side of his body that just wasn't there anymore. Joyce nearly ran to the room. She flung open the door. A single loud beep rung her in her ears. The heart monitor had gone flat. Joyce's dad looked over from the hospital bed, finally awake. Who are you? After the firefight died down, Michael's screaming could still be heard throughout the building. Even with all the blood loss, she, he screamed. Even with a hole where his lungs lung used to be, he screamed. He felt it and he kept feeling it. The world was fuzzy but it still hurt. It hurt so much. And when Michael's was carried away by his squad, who simply didn't know what else to do with the man, the screams and moans of the others echoed around the uh, warehouse. All those with lead in their chests, heads, arms, legs, lungs, hearts, feet, eyes, they, they writhed in the clutches of, of life. On that day, the reaper laid down his sight, turned, down his turned in his shroud, bid farewell to the masses, and quietly retired. Anyway, that was uh, the, the first part of a, an SCP canon known as the End of Death. I'll be continuing this this canon, and uh, and when and I have the time, or want to. I'll see you next time with either this or more SCP. Who knows? I hope you enjoyed, I'll see you next time, please like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. This has been Haku the Bean.